Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Patriots Day <clears throat> is uh, a, in a theater near you. You got to go check it out. It is um, a remarkable achievement, uh, and that's saying a lot for the guy sitting next to me, who's done uh, some incredible work in his career as a director and actor. Peter Berg, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Um, doing uh, a film about Boston and about a sporting event in Boston that became one of the most harrowing, important days in Boston, if not our nation's history. That that had to weigh on you a little bit, Peter. It, it did. You know, I mean, we spent so much time in, in the community um, meeting with the law enforcement and the politicians and the families of the victims and the survivors, making sure that they, they understood why we felt this was such an important story to tell. Um, but then, you know, once, once they got that, um, we, we were very clear about... You know, th this is not a film just about Boston. This is, unfortunately, the new reality that we live in, or certainly a part of it, that there uh, are some very bad people out there committing some really heinous crimes. And one of the things I love so much about this story was, to me, it was a reminder that, you know, there's some, there's some real bad people that maybe want to go and, and swim in the dark side of the pond, and it's nice to know that, that we actually have people on our side who, if they want to go there... We have people that go right there with them and deal with that. And the way that community came together and, and protected themselves and went after these two brothers, I found very inspiring. Yeah, Boston Strong was the phrase that was coming out. That they picked the wrong city, you know. <laughs> As Big Pappy said, they picked the wrong city. Yeah, and it's funny. You did have, uh, you did have David Ortiz <clears throat> reenact his occasionally not safe for work speech at Fenway Park, right? In front of well, yeah, everybody. He, he didn't reenact that. We just took the original footage, but we okay. filmed him coming down. And it was pretty amazing because I got to sit with him in the in the clubhouse b before we filmed him. And he told us his personal story of, of the marathon bombing. Which was? Well, the share? Red Sox took a road trip the day of the bombing. They all left town. Mm -hmm. He was hurt. So he had to stay in town during the whole gunfight in Watertown and the shelter in place. And he talked about being there with his family and being very scared and not knowing what was going to happen. And then just getting real mad and feeling furious that these cowards had the audacity to do this um, in a city that he loved so much. And and when he was handed a mic, he had no plan to to speak. Someone said, you know, someone needed to speak. And they asked Big Poppy if no he wanted kidding. to. So he took the mic and very uh, uh, just organically said, you know, this is our effing city. And nobody's going to dictate our freedom, and it was, um, and that was very inspiring. So you put the Boston uniform back on him, because you know Boston is what is what it says on the away uniform. Obviously, at home, it's always been Red Sox. Yeah. So you got that uniform back. Yes. Was that the original yeah. uniform? Well, I didn't even think about that. So, no, because he was wearing Boston. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he wearing Boston when he made his famous speech? Correct. That's what I'm saying. Right. So you had to pretty much get that back yes, we got on that. him we for got the reenactment of that. We, we put the same. The same sunglasses, the same necklace, but it, we used the original speech and then just had sure. him walk into the tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Shake hands with Mark Wahlberg, yes. whose yeah. character in Patriot's Day is kind of a, a mixture of, of... Two different cops, yeah, mm -hmm. of uh, Bobby Murner and Danny Keeler, two different Boston cops, one who was there at the beginning uh, during the bombing and the other who was very instrumental in... Um, uh, capturing his our night brother, mm -hmm. the younger brother in the boat. So we kind of combine those two characters and and put them both into Mark's character. But it's just it again. It's it's an amazing achievement, and it is something that uh, it was harrowing to watch. It was difficult to sit through at times, <clears throat> very difficult to sit through at times to relive yeah. this moment, yeah. which was it was also groundbreaking. We were talking about it before all of us, the Chris is over there, that it was the first time that I can recall following the events on Twitter were beating the television the news, news stories, outfits yeah. that I was following matter. It was a 21st century story in yeah. many ways as yeah. well, yeah. that the, the technology, how they were able to get these guys in a, in a quick manner. And you, you covered all that together. Yeah, and one, of the, one of the, uh, there's so many untold stories. And one, one of the great stories I find is this uh, 22 year old Chinese immigrant named Danny Meng, who was just this, you know, sweet five foot two, 135 pound kid who had been working really hard, started his own app to deliver food to, to homes in Boston. And he had bought a car, bought a Mercedes with the money he made. He loved his car. And these brothers carjacked him. And they loaded his car up with bombs, and they were headed for Times Square. And this kid had the, uh, the, 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 the poise and the courage to manipulate them, stay alive long enough to escape. And when he escaped, 
he was he remembered he had memorized his GPS tracking number yeah, right. and he gave that to the Boston PD and they were shocked that he memorized now, who it. Who knows like, that stuff? Do you know yours? No. I don't know mine. Uh, and and uh, they were able to very quickly move in on these kids in Watertown, these brothers, but they um, they had more bombs and pressure cookers that, that than they had used at the marathon and they were headed for Times Square. Yeah. So he was an incredible hero, Danny Mang. Yeah, uh, Peter Berg here on the Rich Eisen Show. And I did find it interesting though, that it's such a um, a true depiction of the, the Boston folks and their love of sports intertwined with their mm -hmm. city. And yet the director is somebody who is personally on two particular Sundays taken so much joy in, beating in his Patriots Giants show. beating the Patriots. That, that, that I, well, Maybe just me. I no, couldn't no, get lost on that I as mean, a it's, giant guy. It's, it's tricky because obviously Mark Wahlberg is you know, one of my best friends, and mm -hmm. we just can't talk about it. And, <laughs> and Mark invited me to dinner um, uh, while we're in the middle of filming, uh, uh, and we went to a steakhouse in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I was a little bit late, and I got there, and there were a group of men there. And mm -hmm. Mark said, "Oh, I got saved you a seat," and there was an empty seat. And I sat down, and, and Mark said, oh, "This is this is Robert Kraft." And I had to sit between Mark and, and Robert Kraft for mm. dinner. And I was very apologetic and sympathetic, and they had you know, my support. Um, and Robert Kraft actually told me that before New England, he had always been a huge Giants fan. So we actually bonded oh. over Wyatt Tittle and Fran Tarkenton and, and Lawrence and Taylor. Sure. And, uh, he's just uh, uh, Robert Kraft's a great guy and a great owner and such a great uh, ambassador for the sport. But... Um, I, I feel bad. Uh, I really hope uh, Aaron Rodgers it takes it easy on them this year. Or it's going to be rough. Ah. Uh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. You know, I want Mark to have a good year and a good Super Bowl experience, but I'm very, very nervous for for them. Well, there are Steeler fans who would think that they won't even get to that spot. I, I'm not. I think they will, but I, I think you'll see. You will see uh, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady meet in Houston. I honestly thought. Eli was going to get him this year. That did I, not happen. I know, I know, no. but I just no. thought that the way the Giants' yeah. season was progressing, there yeah. were too many shades of 07, too many shades right. of 2011. Right. We have serious um, mental health issues in our receiver core, so that's a problem. <laughs> um, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I love those guys, yes. but there's some real issues there. We need a, a team of uh, mental counselors to to for the off season well that's your next project isn't it the boat trip you're going to do that that's this the, the story of See, the boat I, trip? Had, I had thought that the boat trip was photoshopped uh ploy done by brady and Kraft and some of the patriots to try mm. and unnerve the, <clears throat> that it really wasn't the mm. receivers down there but now i think it probably was um yeah we gotta we gotta get some some shrinks on our uh, receiver core but i think um Aaron Rodgers is very, very hot right now. I mean, he's like playing at a, a different level. So I think that would be a pretty amazing Super Bowl. That's what I'm hoping for. Peter Berg here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm going to take a 60-second break. Come back. I want to talk Friday Night Lights with you. Okay. Because, I mean, it years, years, years later, it still resonates. Netflix helps. Well, not just the TV show. I'm talking about the film, too. Yeah. Okay. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about both what, you, what you've done with that and just how it, and how it – I saw a little – be honest with you, I saw a little bit of that in Patriots Day a little bit, too. Some of the stuff, the way that you were telling stories that had nothing to do with sports, yeah. but you yeah. you could see how it was you were building the the sort of relationships up and the music too. Uh, Peter Berg is here on the Rich Eisen Show. We're back in sixty ticks to the clock with you and him here on the show. The, the drought is over. It I is the drought. Yes, we the are drought, I don't want to hear are any you more about the drought. drought's over. I proclaim the drought over. It's <laughs> raining. I think we should go p turn on the sprinklers right the now. The drought is over. Uh, Peter Berg is here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Hey, you can join this show at the Super Bowl in Houston, Texas at richinhouston.com. you got to come out and see the show at the NFL Experience. We'd love to have you there to get tickets to watch our show. Uh, at the Super Bowl in Houston, richinhouston.com. Don't miss a chance to see a live broadcast of the Rich Eisen Show at Super Bowl week in Houston, richinhouston.com. Uh, I, I sent you a, a photograph uh, weeks ago, and uh, our show open for our Houston show is an, um, an homage to Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I saw it. Now, not the TV version, the film version, uh -huh. okay? And for uh, our television segment that's coming up after this chat, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you and see play for you a promo and see if you, you think I channel my inner Coach Taylor. Billy Bob Thornton. Okay, I was okay. Billy Bob. Okay, yeah. Coach Gaines. Okay. So um, what, 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 are you, what are you most proud of 
of the Friday Night Lights creation that you took from uh, the Buzz Bissinger I mean, I think that, that what, what Buzz did um, was, you know, to take, take football as a, as a portal into, um, you know, our, our culture and us as, you know, pr probably particularly an, an American from an American perspective, but really look at how and, and you know, why, why we live and how we live and how we love and how we fight and how we mend and how, um, you know, what inspires us and all of these themes that really are, you know, pr pretty heavy themes without, without trying to get too heavy. Um, Friday Night Lights was a real look at how we live. And, um, you know, I think uh, we were able to capture a lot of that uh, in the film. I think Billy Bob did a great job. I think these young actors, um, you know, were, were just, just the right group to get it. Um, and I understood what Buzz was trying to get at uh, in the book. And then the television show, we, you know, we, we always felt when we finished the movie, you know, that was just a scratch in the surface of what Bissinger had done in the book. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to tell, you know, tell these stories and explore these issues um, in a more comprehensive way. And uh, we just, again, got the right, the right cast. And we all felt very connected to the, to the ideas behind that book. And, and the television show, I think, you know, Works so well because of it. Certainly not about the football, and that's the best part about it too, yeah. Peter. Okay, and and I'm I'm pleased that we can have a conversation right here on a show that's on Audience and Direct TV, which was a a, a large part in trying to keep Friday yes. Night Lights television Direct show TV, alive. Direct TV saved Friday Night Lights, and, and which is one of the things I'm one of the many things I'm proud of being part of this because it deserved to be saved. It deserved to 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 last as long as it as it did, and because. The football aspect, okay, I'll check it out to see if it's if it's as good as the movie. The relationship between Coach Taylor and his wife and his daughter, mm -hmm. those were the ones that really hit you in the gut. Yeah. Really hit you in the gut. And then there was the, the whole, then there obviously was the relationships between the players and the coach as well. It was more than just the the football stuff. Well, yeah, and that's what still co continues to to amaze and and kind of delight me is, you know, I was um I was just in Hong Kong several months ago, and at the hotel I checked in, the the um the Chinese bellman wanted to talk about Friday Night Lights. No way. And told me that he watched it with his family, and he barely spoke English, being translated into Mandarin uh, and Cantonese in China, and they watch it in China. I've had Russians, I've had Europeans um, of all shapes and sizes, and a lot of women who've never watched football don't understand anything about the sport, and it never ceases to uh, amaze me that, that this show connects globally um and it has absolutely nothing to do with football although some people have come up to me and said you know what i've oh, particularly women i've always hated football it drives me crazy that my husband's watch football finally from watching friday night lights i've gotten an, a glimmer as to why people seem to care about this you know crazy sport so much so uh clear eyes full heart can't lose you know how what how to say that in chinese is that what you're saying uh, I or, don't, but okay. the next Some, time I come on, I will This somebody will does? That's a good question. You know, somebody does. Because so, there's people out there who do that. I would always call a buddy of mine, um, <clears throat> and, and you guys know Jay as well, uh, big Dolphin fan. We would call each other and like, did you see Friday Night Lights tonight? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, did you cry? Like, yeah. <laughs> I cried. Did you cry? Yeah, yeah. I cried. And then there, and then there's guys like Brockman out there as well, um, a single man in the world who did not mind looking at some of the cast members as well. I hope it wasn't uh, Taylor Kitsch. Though. Was, it, was it? No. Okay. Good. But he, hey, Rig, Rig, you know, Riggins, 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 the handsome man. Riggins, the handsome man. Handsome man. I man enough to admit it. Where, where, if if you had to tell, just let's spitball it. Where, where's Coach Taylor right now? What do you think he's doing right now? If Coach you Taylor or Kyle Chandler? <laughs> the actual Coach Taylor, not um, Kyle, Ch but Co uh, where we last left him. If we if we could pick up his story, Coach where, Taylor where is uh, he right now? Since football season's over, he's down in uh, uh, Key West, 
uh, drinking pineapple vodka drinks with Mike Leach, Coach Leach, <laughs> talking, talking, uh, just just crazy football, and they're getting ready to start arguing, and there's probably going to be a fist fight between Leach and uh, Coach Taylor in the near future. Kyle Chandler's there too, though, because the bloodline. Right? That's why right. they canceled it. They canceled. And that's my favorite show. Oh, you know? oh no. it's so good. I know, crazy. No, but Leach, Leach had a. I think he had a cameo yeah, at a gas yeah. station. Oh, yeah, didn't he? yeah. Leach was in front. Leach is my, you know, my favorites and. And and um, you know, we talked about if we ever did a if we ever did a, a sequel, a, brought the brought the show back. Mm -hmm. We're talking about doing a movie. We had a whole Mike Leach, Coach Taylor tie oh, in. Like what? Can you flesh it out for me? Well, we, we wanted to do. You know, I, I adore Mike Leach, and I don't. It's it's old news now, but his trials and tribulations at Texas Tech was almost a Shakespearean drama full of, you know cover-ups and accusations and and i think uh a lot of misinformation and big egos that were swirling around but what got lost in all of that and uh was this genius that, that was mike leach and i really find that he's one of the most more interesting minds in football mm -hmm. and we had talked about creating a scenario where coach taylor went through a similar experience to what mike leach had gone through at texas tech and then Re rebounded at a at a college in the Northwest, huh? So, so Friday night lights, if you will, Saturday night lights. Uh, would, Friday would night lights been, turning into Saturday night lights would correct. have been Coach Taylor having to go to the Pacific Northwest. Yes, correct. A la Mike and Leach, and then maybe even eventually, if we were to do another one, coming to Los Angeles and helping out with the Ram situation, <laughs> <laughs> trying to fix on golf. Well, do you think it would have been amazing to see Coach Taylor coach in the NFL and try and bring some of that into the NFL? I'm in. Be amazing. Talk to Kyle Chandler. We're in. Kyle. Okay. Tell him. Let's go out there right now. We're we. Are, is this a pitch meeting? Are we officially pitching? No, the pitch is done. Can we done. be co-producers? You're, you're appealing to Kyle Chandler okay. to come out and do, <laughs> and to do, do the do it. film. <laughs> it's up to Kyle. He's in Texas right now with his beautiful family. Okay. And he, you know, he can be coaxed. Spectacular. I mean, he really was a perfect, perfect guy he's a, he's for a, that role. He's a phenomenal actor, and you know, I didn't want to cast him. I was hell bent against casting him. Why? Um, well, I thought he was too sweet and and soft, and he had been in a show uh, about a newspaper where he got the newspaper <laughs> early edition. Right? Early edition. Yeah. And I thought it was a good show, but I did, I didn't see Kyle Chandler as this grizzled Texas coach, and um, I wanted Dwight Yoakam to play the coach. Wow. And Dwight Yoakam, God love him. We you know he's a he's a you know, performing performance guy. He's got a he's got a big music career. His we were about to do it, but his schedule was so preclusive because he needed all this time off to tour. So we we couldn't figure out anyone. And the casting director was like, "You you're wrong about Kyle." I'm like, "I really don't say it. you're wrong." Finally, I'm like, "I'll meet him." And then I mean, I've told this story before. He showed up really hungover, like really like <laughs> reeking, like like the kind of hangover where it's coming out of your skin. And, and and we were at a restaurant in Brentwood and people were moving away from the table and kids were uncomfortable and mothers. And he was just kind of bleary eyed and he just looked awful. And I was like, oh, I like this. I go, if you could look like this every day, you could do it. And he had been in a bachelor party the night before and and just was a mess. And and that's when I and you know he won my heart with with that. So when it all showing. comes down to it, bleary eyed, <laughs> drunken heart, can't lose, <laughs> can't lose. But he was, uh, it was the best, it was the best mistake, uh, and really like to me proof that you know you think you can plan things in life, and you think well we have these master plans, and you know there were so many accidents in that show, and it never, I never thought it would be Kyle. Um, I never thought, you know, um, I, I I was not as certainly as good at marriage as Kyle Chandler and Connie Britton were, and in many ways that show or that marriage was kind of my idea of what a marriage could be, um, and and I, you know, that was never at the at the forefront of what I thought the show would be about, mm -hmm. but it really turned out to be, and I've had so many couples come up to me and say, you know, that it's given them faith and made them believe that marriage can work and you can you know ride these trials and tribulations and and you know the 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 rough stuff of marriage and and come out the other side and, and we never thought that would happen it was just all kind of 
the way it worked out. Well, and thank you for Friday Night Lights. Okay. Let me just put Thanks it that for way. For, on behalf of everybody who's fans of it that, that listen and watch this show, and again, uh, the way that you handle the relationships at end of, of Patriots Day, I could see a lot of, mm-hmm. of uh, FNL and all of that. Check out Patriots Day in a theater near you. Peter Berg, thank you for coming on well, thank anytime. You. Thank you. We're, we're here. Thank all you, gentlemen. You thank got you. it. Peter Berg here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.